Uh, hello. So for today's lesson, uh, we're going to be introducing the trim and extend commands. Uh, and I'm going to introduce those uh, via a model design, a model plate that will have all of the concepts that we're going to use, um, that you're going to use in order to create uh, plate one. There's going to be an assignment posted that will be plate one. And so you're going to use today's lesson to help you complete it. If uh, some of the commands or some of the navigation are confusing to you, I'm going to be posting additional videos that you can look to that um, go uh, in depth on each of the commands um, and navigating AutoCAD so that you can feel more comfortable with it. So, And if you have any questions in addition, uh, please post them on Google Classroom. So here is the model plate. Let me slide AutoCAD to the side. Go to the model plate, start a new tab. This is a little bit bigger. Okay. So um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at this shape. And just like we would do with a freehand sketch, uh, I'm going to start with the overall dimensions of this shape. This shape is eight and a half inches by five inches. So I'm going to make a bounding box. The command I'm going to use for this bounding box is rectangle. I can find this in my ribbon here. My ribbon appears a little different because I've uh, uh, decreased the size of my screen. Um, but I'm just going to type the command in open space because that's how I like working. Okay. Um, I want this to be started at the origin. So instead of clicking at the origin, I'm going to type 0, comma, 0, and enter. And then for the size here, I'm going to type 8.5, comma, and what, what do I want the other corner to be? 8.5 by 5. So 8.5, comma, 5, and hit enter. All right. Now I'm going to move around my screen. I'm going to click on the scroll wheel. That will enable me to drag across. So again, let's click on my scroll wheel, and I'll be able to drag across. And then I'm going to zoom in by um, turning my scroll wheel. That will allow me to zoom in. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this square in the middle here. Uh, now this looks like it's three inches by three inches and it starts in the center. Now if you haven't already, make sure to adjust your O-snap settings uh, so they look like the ones I have here. Make sure object snap is on and object snap tracking is on. I'm going to hit OK. Then I'm going to go into my uh, ribbon, find the type of rectangle that I want to draw with. I'm going to use this one that starts at the center. That way I can use the center of the rectangle I already have drawn to help me. So I'm going to generate my center. The O-snap settings allowed me to do that. Then I'm going to start drawing my square in the middle. And it looks like it will allow you to select half the square, which is 1.5 inches. And I want to make sure this is doesn't know it's a square, it thinks it's a rectangle, so you need to uh, hit the tab key so that you can set the other side's length to also be 1.5. Okay. And then I have my square in the center. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw uh, the corners here, and this is where our trim and extend commands are going to come into play. So I'm going to use the line tool. And it's going to ask me, okay, where do I want to start this? So I'm going to look at these corners here. And I say, okay, um, I don't really know where this line starts vertically, but horizontally I know it starts at two and a quarter inches in from the corner here. So I'm going to type as my start point, as my first point, uh, my X coordinate is going to be 2.25, and my Y coordinate is going to be zero. 2.25 comma zero. And that looks like it puts me in the right spot. Now, I don't know the other corner. I could probably do some trig to figure out where that other point is on the line. But I do know the angle here should be 30 degrees. And when I move this line over, you can actually see that it gives me an angle. Now, what you don't want to do, you don't want to move your mouse till it says 150 uh, and click because this it doesn't show you decimals, but it's probably somewhere around 149.8. It could be 150.2. It's not going to be exact. So you don't want to just click. You actually want to hit the tab key on your keyboard and type in that number 
150 degrees. Now it's 150 degrees because it's measured from here, not from here. So 180 minus 30 is 150 degrees. Okay. Now I have this line that extends too far um, and I want to cut it down. The command I'm going to use for that is the trim command. So I'm going to type in trim, hit enter, uh, and I'm going to select the first thing is going to be the boundary for my line. So I'm going to select this right here. This rectangle is my boundary and hit enter. And then I'll select the part of the line I want trimmed. I can select here or here and it'll trim because it just kind of looks at this line that I selected first as my boundary. So I'll select this part of the line I want gone and hit enter and I've exited the trim command. Um, now, let's say I want to trim this corner here, which I do. Uh, I'm going to want to trim again. Instead of typing in trim again, I can actually hit the space bar and that will repeat my most recent command. Okay, now that I want to trim this corner, I'm going to, I'm in the trim command. My boundary is going to be this line here. I'm going to hit enter. Then I'm going to hover over the corner I want gone and it'll show you a preview again of it being cut away. And I click and I hit enter and it's gone. So that corner is done. Now I want to do the same thing up top. So I'm going to type in line. And again, I know the, that horizontally it's 2.25 is the start point. And vertically, it's this line here, which is 5 inches. So 2.25 comma 5 will put me in the right spot. And then the angle, I'm going to make 150 again. Now this time, instead of making the line too long, I'm going to make it too short so I can show you guys how to use the extend command. I'm going to type tab, or hit tab, type in 150, and once I'm done with that, I'm going to hit the escape key to exit out of that. Now I want to extend this line so that it reaches here. So I'm going to type in extend. Uh, I'm going to select the object that I want to extend to first, hit enter, and then as I hover over the line that I want to extend, it'll actually show me a preview of what it's going to do. Uh, I'll click on it and it completes it and I'll hit enter and it exits out of the command. Now again, just like before, I want to get rid of this corner. I'm going to type trim, hit enter, click on the line that's my boundary for trimming, hit enter, and then select the corner, hit enter again. Okay, well, well along to creating this. Next, uh, we're going to do the other two sides. Now you could do the same process to create the lines on the other two sides, but I'm actually going to use the mirror command for this. So the way the mirror command works is it allows you to take uh, objects, lines, and mirror them onto the other side. So I'm going to first select the objects I want to mirror, which are these two lines here, and I'm going to hit enter. And then I need to select uh, a line to mirror things about, so an axis of symmetry. I don't really need that line to exist. I just need two points that are on that line. So I'm going to select the middle of this square here. And it'll actually show me a preview of if I select a second point. I want it to be right here. And that creates a mirror for me. Now, then it'll prompt you. It says, do you want to erase the source objects? Do I want to erase my original lines? In this situation, no, I don't want to erase my original lines. So I'm going to hit no. And there we have it. I have my other two corners done just like that. The mirror command, very useful. Uh, we're gonna use it a lot. I'm gonna use trim again. And this time when I use trim, instead of selecting boundaries, I'm just gonna hit enter. And what that does is it selects everything as a boundary. It's a little bit slower in terms of, uh, it won't take off the whole corner when I click, but it will let me go through and just click on whatever parts I want gone was just a really fast way to get rid of all these little sections. So again, just to show that one more time, I'm going to trim, I'm hitting enter. So it's trim, I'm in the trim command, I hit enter again, and that selects everything as my boundary. And that'll allow me to trim off any corner that I want gone. A lot of people like using the trim command this way. And I'm gonna hit enter. Okay, I'm almost done. Now all I need are these two little rectangles here. So for these two rectangles, uh, my plan is going to be to create one on the left side and then use the mirror command to create the one that goes on the right side. 
So to look at this, I'm going to see, okay, where, how big are these? Where are they? Uh, they're three and a quarter of an inch by two inches. Uh, they start, uh, looks like, okay, so this is five and this is two. So it's one and a half units up is this corner and this corner. This line here is one and a half units up. Uh, and then this line here, okay, let's see, this is one inch away from here. This is three inches, so it's two and a half inches in from the center, and it's another three quarters of an inch this way. So I can start from this corner here. You see that this okay, this is in two and a half inches, this is four and a quarter here, so it's one and three fourths this way, and then another three fourths in this way, so that's one inch from here. This should be one inch in and one and a half inches up. So I'm gonna start my rectangle at one comma 1.5, and then it's going to be 0.75 by two. And there's my rectangle in the right spot. So again, just to review how I found that right correct spot, you know, this is five inches, five inches minus two inches is three inches, it's gonna be half, up top, half below, so it's one and a half inches below. Now, sideways, you know, this is one inch here, three quarters of an inch, that's 1.75. This is one and a half inches, so it's 1.75 plus one and a half inches is uh, 3.25. This is four and a quarter inches up here. This is four and a quarter inches this way. Four and a quarter inches minus three and a quarter inches is one inch, so it's one inch this way. Okay, now that I have this rectangle, I can use the mirror command. Select it, hit enter, select my line of symmetry that I mirror about. Do I want to erase my source object? No, I do not. Uh, and here we are. I have my base plate created. Done. Now that we have done the base plate, you're going to use the skills we learned here. So that's the trim command, the extend command, uh, the mirror command, uh, and you're going to use that to create your own plate, and that's going to be the actual plate number one, the uh, sheet metal stamp. So it's, you know, it's a different shape, it's got different size, but it's a lot of the same skills are applied here. Um, okay, one thing I want to point out is our naming protocol. I just want to remind you, most of you uh, got this 100% correct, but when you save your file, let's say I was saving this file, you want to save it as uh, your period. So let's say you're in period three, underscore your last name. So for me, that's Blake. Your first name, for me, that's Joseph. If you didn't know my first name, now you know it. Uh, and then this would be called base plate. Yours is going to be called sheet metal stamp. And it's automatically going to save it as a .dwg file. Uh, so I'm going to save that. And then as I go ahead and I'm gonna look that up, I'm gonna show the file location. When I save that, it's going to look like this. You wanna make sure that you're submitting your DWG file. You might also have a BAK file. Do not submit that, okay? This is what you should submit. All right, well, that's it for today. Um, and, uh, We'll see, I'll see you next time. Uh, I'll see you on Wednesday. I will have a, a new video, a new lesson, uh, and a new assignment. Though plate one is due on Friday, I recommend you get it done uh, before Wednesday. Okay, have a great day.